Synths and pedals, an obvious but sometimes unlikely combination, can get you the most wonderful effects. If you're like me, you love synths because of their complexity, the infinite programmability and sound design capabilities, and you love pedals because they add that extra special sauce to your sound source. One of my favorite reasons to combine synths and pedals is to be able to simplify the core sound of the synth you're using and let that character shine through the quirky personality of the pedals that you're using. Today, we're just gonna explore some soundscapes. I wanna just play and have you listen to what a typical sound design session might look like for me if I'm making a sample pack or just trying to relax on a weeknight evening. You know who sells both pedals and synthesizers? The sponsor of this video, Perfect Circuit. Perfect Circuit has become one of my favorite synth shops in the past few years. I used their website as a resource long before I started making synth content and have shopped there for even longer. They're a great independent shop and they have a brick and mortar store located in Burbank, California. Like I said, they sell pedals, synths, and tons of other pro audio gear and they ship worldwide. The first pedal I want to explore today is the Hologram Electronics Microcosm. It's essentially a granular effects processor. It's really a lot of things, as you can see by all of these little modules included. But you can kind of think of it as like an insanely affected delay pedal that you can turn the mix all the way up on to create granular effects. Some of these parameters have different functions across the different algorithms, but most of them are really consistent. It gives you a nice reverb control, you can affect the filter, the amount of repeats, and the activity knob is really where the different modules get their flair. You can check out the manual online, but I just kind of want to have you listen to some of the sounds. One thing I love about the Super 6 is the binaural processing, the built-in stereo goodness. And similarly today, we're going to be using stereo effects, so a pair of headphones would be great. I'm manipulating some parameters here on the Super 6. So you can hear the dry sound on this arpeggio we've been playing around with. I'm also using the delay on the Super 6. And listen to those tails go even after I turn off the arpeggiator. Wow, I actually really like this. <laughs> really like this patch. I can't wait to do a full review on this synth. So this is pretty complex already. You can hear things dancing around in the stereo field. But let's play with the patch on the microcosm as well. And mix it fully wet.
I really like this algorithm. It's kind of like a timed sequenced momentary effect. It glides the pitch. And you can adjust the intensity of that pitch modulation. Really great for dissonance. some of the other algorithms within that effects block add different octaves to the pitch shifting. It's a nice full rich sound. That's a sample right there. sometimes, especially when you're a shoddy keyboard player. I love these glitchy timeless, timeless as in like kind of tempo-less, unless you sync the tempo. Uh, but anyways, these tempo-less effects, because one of my favorite sound design methods is to find rhythm where you didn't think rhythm existed. So. I'm going to sample that little five second clip of audio and find some repeating elements and melodies and rhythms and chop it up as like a little micro sample. Interrupt is another sequencing algorithm on the microcosm. I really love pushing this algorithm digitally. I've turned the master volume way down on the Super 6. I'm not sure if you can see, but it's still pushing the microcosm, getting some really cool digital artifacts. Let's play with some more traditional granular effects. See, it does that kind of chopped, glitchy, soft stuff really nice. Again, with the different modifications in each algorithm, you get mixtures of different octaves in there. If I recall, I really like this tunnel algorithm. Particularly using it with really soft synth patches. a nice consistent rhythmic glitch. And you can always change the shape of the sound. Thank you. 
little hot signal there. Let's get another ARP going on the Super 6. It's a nice little background texture that can be used virtually anywhere. I love switching the synth patches on the Super 6 in the middle of something because it cuts it off and immediately transitions to it. And um, the microcosm has latched onto that tail as you can see. feeling these underwater murky sounds. It's the end of July. It's really hot. It's also really rainy. And I tend not to make a lot of music when the weather's warm. Because I'm just really tired. But it's funny to me how kind of find that the sounds that I make represent the feeling of the seasons. The next pedal we're going to explore today is the Chase Bliss Generation Loss Mark II. I'll link to another video about this pedal that kind of does a deeper dive, but it basically makes everything sound old and broken. It's really great to demonstrate with just a, a baseline in it patch sawtooth wave. Let's hold that chord. My favorite feature on this pedal is the failure knob, which basically adds unpredictable, randomized drops in the sound. Here's what it sounds like with just the failure knob cranked all the way up. Flutter adds tape crinkle artifacts. And wow adds pitch modulation. The model knob explores different tape machine emulations from new VCRs to old VCRs to fantastical made up tape creations. And it even has a fun tape stop effect. You can blend in a little bit of the dry signal for some chorusing, but I prefer to keep it totally wet. And you can also add some tape noise, just some background hiss. Here's what that sounds like by itself. I actually tend to really like the middle setting. Let's get a bit more of a complex patch happening on the synth. Nothing too complex, but perhaps a little bit more interesting. Again, I'm really feeling these nice, slow, watery, summery arps. And let's just listen to some of the different 
controls on the tape machine. Tape machine. dark and murky. And the saturation knob saturates the signal a little bit differently based on the model that you have selected. Sometimes it doesn't even matter what you play. Does it ever really? The same way I find myself getting super ambient and pretty with the microcosm, I always find myself getting super noisy and gross with the generation loss. I really like exploring the more experimental soundscape side of synth and pedal combinations because it's really fun and it's easy to get lost and it provides good content for revisiting and sampling later on. I've been recording for about 35 minutes now and this video is going to be way shorter than that, but I hope that's a testament to how easy it is to kind of get lost in things. If you want to access some sample packs I've made using similar combinations of synths and pedals, go check out my Patreon. I also offer lessons on some different sequencers and synths like the Electron Gear, some Teenage Engineering stuff, and basic modular stuff too. If you just want to chat and say hey, check out my Instagram at slow haste. And a huge thanks again to Perfect Circuit for sponsoring this video. Again, a really great way to support the channel and Perfect Circuit is to use the affiliate links in the description of this video to buy some cool shit. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.